turn, turn, turn off the middle light here, the middle rod. So then let's restart the class. Just the middle one. So, uh, then the next topic we're going to move on to is marketing research. What is marketing research? Marketing research is gathering, recording, and analyzing data so that we can have the information to make our decision. So just like we did in the case study, we gathered the data, right? We collect the data, we write down the data, and then when we have the data, then we can do the analysis. Okay? So marketing research is getting this data that we can analyze. So of course, this is going to be more complicated internationally than in domestic, in our home country. Okay? So first of all, the language problem, we have to translate. Then there's cultural problems. Maybe people don't understand the questions well. Or they don't give the same answers we expect in our culture. So this is taken from the book, the online book. Okay? This is the diagram that shows the marketing research. So first we start with the firm objective. What does the company want? Okay. Then we find out what information do we need. Depends on the firm's needs. Uh, we define the problem. Okay. We choose how we're going to analyze, analyze by country, by region, or globally. Then we find out is there any is the data available? Okay. So, for example, second, we're going to talk about primary and secondary research. Do you know the difference between primary and secondary research? Yeah. What's the difference? Primary research costs more than secondary. Secondary we can find in the internet, but the primary we should search for ourselves. What kind of, give an example of primary research. You're, you're asking the other people. Interviewing people? Yes. Yeah. Primary research. Right? So secondary research, can secondary data be useful? Right? Sometimes it can be misleading, so we have to be careful. So can we get the secondary data easily? Where can we get the secondary data? What problems can we solve using the secondary data? Okay? Then, uh, if the secondary data, we can't use the secondary data, then we have to do our own research. So we have to decide, what's the value of the research? Do you know cost-benefit analysis? We have to look, can we get a big benefit from this research? As you said, primary research costs money and time. Okay? So first we do the cost-benefit analysis. Are we going to get the benefit from this primary research? That's worth the cost. Okay. Uh, then we uh, start to design the research. Okay. Uh, we decide what kind of research we're going to do. Uh, we have some problems, of course, with the data, primary data collection. Okay. Like uh, in different, especially in different countries, we can have the language or other kind of problems. So then we design, we make the vocabulary, the wording, the questions. We sample sample the primary research on some people. Then we carry out the, put all our research together and analyze the data. Okay? And then we interpret the data. So this is just an overview of the steps of marketing research. <coughs> so the research can be quite wide. Scope means how big or how wide is it? We can check about the economics and demography, like we just saw for L'Oreal. They checked about the economics. How much do people spend on cosmetics? Okay? What's the GDP of the country? We can check about the culture, social, political areas. We already talked about that kind of thing. We can find just an overview of the market conditions. We can look at the technological environment. We can look at the competition. 
So this is a process for any research. If you do research, you need to follow this process. First define the problem and then establish your objectives. So people think that's quite simple, but this is where people waste a lot of time and money. The first case, they don't define the problem properly. Okay? If you don't define the problem properly, then when you, you do all of these things, and then you're just wasting your time. So you have to spend time at the start when you're doing any research to make the correct problem and objectives. Then we find out we find out where are we going to find the information, the sources. We consider the costs and benefits. We gather the, the data. Okay, and then we effectively communicate the results to the decision maker. So you guys will be doing for your marketing planning is a little bit like a research activity, right? You'll be doing that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, so <coughs> One issue is at the start, we have some ambiguous, means not clear, business problem. And we need to make it some really uh, tightly drawn and achievable objectives. So that means very clear objectives. Okay, so this is even more difficult in foreign markets because the environment can cause some problem with the, making the clear objectives or making the clear problem. So. <clears throat> we need to include all the variables. So an example of Barbie. Barbie, they didn't consider the cultural variable, right? In the problem. So when they were making their problem and objectives, Barbie probably just thought, well, the problem is we need to sell the dolls, okay? And our objective is to find out just uh, how we can sell this kind of doll. But they didn't think about the cultural factor, that maybe they should change the doll, right? Change the style of the doll to a different one. So we have to be careful when we're setting the problem at the start, that we don't miss something. Okay? Self-reference criteria can cause us to miss something. We can think, oh well, that kind of Barbie doll is very good and successful, so we don't need to change it. So we, can, we have to be careful. So, uh, if we're using secondary data, some countries have much better secondary data than other countries. Which group chose the US for their United States for their final project? Did any group choose the United States? Hmm? Maybe you'll be sorry. No, right? The United States has the best secondary data available. Okay? Uh, its data is not matched in other countries. The quality and quantity of marketing data. So before when I was in doing my master's degree, I did some uh, project for an Italian company who wanted to sell their furniture in the United States. And there was a lot of information okay, about that business and the companies and competitors okay, and how much people are spending on those kind of products. and how much percent of interior designers are buying that kind of products. So all that kind of information is uh, uh, available in the US. Sometimes you have to pay money, paid service, to get more information. Uh, so just equal to the US, we have Japan has good data and several European countries. So these days we're trying to get more data collection for other countries, but they're catching up. So for example, most countries don't have government agencies that collect the kind of data that's relevant or regularly available as in the US. Like the US has the trade agency, government trade agency, and they collect all the data. Okay? Another problem is uh, the language skill. So did you choose a country that doesn't have English or Korean or any other language? Hmm? What country did you choose? Saudi Arabia, are you going to be able to find secondary data about Saudi Arabia easily? Do you speak Arabic? And search online in Arabic? Government websites? Huh? 
So it's a bit more challenging to find information, right? If you have some native language speaker who speaks Arabic, it can help you, okay? Uh, maybe they have some information in English in Saudi Arabia, okay? But it's not going to be as good as the US or other countries. So often this official statistics can be wrong. Argentina was giving false information about inflation for a long time. Inflation in Argentina was about 20%, but they were saying it was about 10%. Okay? So the countries sometimes don't give the accurate information. Okay? So the less developed countries is more prone to optimism, and they, make this, they can make this kind of error on purpose. Greece, we saw Greece got in trouble with the European Union, okay? because it made some false reporting and accounting. So <coughs> data can also be many years out of date. Even if you look at the, we look at the Nation Master, we can see some countries. Good thing about Nation Master is you can see the source and the dates. So some countries, the latest data is 2001, 2003. Other countries, 2014. So can we compare the countries if it's 2001 versus 2014? No. Why? Well, it's hard to compare in that case. Okay. Uh, also the category. Different countries have different categories. So we see on Nation Master again a lot of different categories. In some categories, we only have 10 countries. In some <coughs> country, categories, 50 countries. Because countries report differently. Right? Obviously, the major ones like GDP, <coughs> that kind of thing, is going to be the same. But if we get down to crime, different countries have different statistics about crime. Some countries will report the number of murders. Some countries will report just theft, that kind of thing. So sometimes it's hard to compare the data. So when we're validating the secondary data, we have to say, can we use the secondary data or not? We have to ask some questions. Is it reliable? Who collected the data? Okay. So again, a nation master, the good thing is it tells you the source. Sources of the data, usually the government agency is good, or international agency like OECD or UN. Okay? Would there be any reason for misrepresenting the fact? The organization who, who collected the data, sometimes they are getting paid by companies, right? For example, a guy made a report on Iceland uh, banks as very safe just before the crisis. But he was getting paid by the Icelandic Chamber of Commerce, right? So is the, why were they collecting the data? Okay, how was the data collected? Okay, so we have to check if the data is okay to use or not. One way is cross-checking. Okay, if we check one data and another data from different sources, and they both have the same conclusion, then they're mo it's more reliable. Okay. <clears throat> so, primary data is data collected specifically for that pro for our own research project. So, for your final project, you don't have to do any primary research. But if you do primary research, it can be extra points, right? Uh, so, it kind of primary research you can do is email questionnaire, right? If you send an email questionnaire, you have to get a scan of your student ID to show that you're a student, not a competitor looking for information, right? Write a nice introduction about your student and you're doing a student project, okay? Can you answer this questionnaire? Okay, you send a questionnaire on the email, just five questions, short questions, right? Then you could call, telephone questionnaire. Okay, you have Skype, maybe if you can use Skype or something like that, it's not very expensive. Okay? Uh, that kind of research. Okay? Uh, quantitative research is, uh, do you know the difference between quantitative and qualitative research? What's the difference? Yes, one is numerical. Which one is numerical? Quantitative. We're more talking about numbers large number of people and percentages. Okay, what about qualitative research? What is qualitative research about? project hmm? What did you say? Categorical, so 
people's stories, people's opinions, okay, more so than actual numbers and figures. Okay, so I guess you would be doing uh, more of the qualitative research type, right, if you're asking people questions. Quantitative research, you need a, a big number for it to be statistically valid, right? So people answer the questions and then you say 50% of people answer this way, okay? Usually summarized in, in uh, percentages or averages, okay? So uh, qualitative research, we can have open-ended questions. We're going to look at an example later. Okay, of, of kind of questions we ask in, in the qualitative research. Uh, they're not looking for a structured response. So it's not like you give all the same answers so we can make a percentage. Okay, everybody can have a different and open answer. So we just want to interpret people's ideas and people's thoughts without using the numbers. So this helps us especially with cultural factors and behavioral factors. Okay? that kind of thing, understanding people's behavior. So there is, obviously there are problems in gathering the primary data, especially across countries. We need to get the correct information and truthful information and it needs to be relevant to our objective. So every country has a difference. Sometimes people have an unwillingness to communicate their opinion, sometimes an inability. Generally, that kind of research is easier to do in Western Europe or the US than in Asia. Okay? In Asia, companies and people are a little bit more careful with information and are a little bit suspicious of people just asking them questions. But in the Western countries, people are more open to giving their opinion and answering, especially companies. Uh, so. We can make some mistake in the questionnaire, in the translation. We need to hire the proper translating. So also people's opinions can be different across different... Uh, people have different opinions about products and concepts. Okay? An example is uh, cake. Uh, in Britain or Ireland, people can make the cake at home. Right? Just for normally, on the weekend. And just they eat the cake as dessert. Do you understand dessert? So they cook in the oven and eat as dessert. But in Korea, you don't really cook cakes at home. Cake is just for a special occasion. Okay? Like a birthday or a party. And you buy the cake in the cafe shop or something like that. So people have different opinions about a product or concept in different countries. Okay? People see a different use. People can see a different use. In Asia, they see the use of a cake is celebrating the occasion, right? In the UK, they think the use of the cake is eating for dessert in a normal day. Okay? So the product or concept, we need to be, it must be understood and used in the community to get the good data or the good uh, opinions. So if we have... Uh, a very complex idea or concept, then it's going to be harder to design the research that, to get meaningful opinions and reactions. Okay? So for example, babies. Do you know babies? They, they can't fill out the questionnaire. Right? So Gerber is a company which sells like nappies and other things for babies, baby material. But it can't, it can't uh, interview the babies. So that's challenging. So the point is, if the people don't understand our product, then we can't uh, interview them. So uh, cultural difference can provide an explanation why people don't respond to the survey. Okay. Uh, also, in the, some society like the Middle East, uh, the role of the male and gender-based inquiries can affect the willingness to respond. So uh, we might not get good response from women in the Middle East. Okay? And in that case, we can try more less direct way to find the answer. So we also have problems with sampling in the field studies. So 
Uh, sampling means we choose one part of the... If we are... Sampling is used in the nature. We have a field, right? So we talk about fields here. And they just take one part of the field, like one square. Okay? And then they count how many insects are in this square. Because they don't want to count all the insects in the field, right? So they just choose one sample in the field and count the number of insects and then multiply. Okay? So that's kind of the meaning for sampling. Okay? So we can do the same in market research. We just choose a sample of people to uh, interview. Okay? But we can have some problem here. We may not have the right demographic data and lists. So if we're doing the sample, we need to know how big the field is, right? But we may not know exactly how many men and women are in the country, what the percentages are, what the age groups are. Okay, so it's harder to make the sample. <coughs> so we can have a lack of detailed social and economic information. How often do you have the census in Korea? Do you know the do you understand census? How often do you have census in Korea? Four years? Hmm? Not every year, no. Do you remember when you did the census last? Census is you write down who lives in your house, what their jobs are, what their income is. The government sends around documents. Do you know that? Yes? Or just your parents fill in and you don't know? <laughs> you don't know, right? So every country has a census, but some countries don't, right? Most developed countries have a census, but some countries don't, okay? So uh, we, want, we want to contact companies by phone, right? Let's say that your, what product are you guys going to sell in your project? Uh, hair care. Hair care products? Yes. So you're going to, maybe you want to contact the hair professionals, the saloons, right? So does the, do you have a telephone directory where you can find information, the phone numbers for the, the hairdressers? What country are you going to sell in? Yeah. Iran? Yeah. Why are you laughing? Huh? Yes. Why did you choose Iran? Hmm? You like a challenge? You don't, like that name, huh? don't like the easy option? Choosing an English speaking country like Australia or Canada? Right? So anyway, you may have trouble finding the phone number for hair saloons in, in Iran. I had trouble when I came to Korea. Whenever I want to find a phone number for anywhere in Korea, I can't find it. I asked my wife, how do Korean people find a phone number? How do you guys find a phone number? Searching on neighbor. Searching on neighbor. Say, search on neighbor, right? So foreign people might not understand that about Korea. Okay? Because in Ireland we have a phone directory white pages for all the businesses, and they're all listed in the phone. So I asked my wife when I came here, where's the white pages? I want to call the mechanic, right? And she said, what? What is white pages? I don't understand. And I said, white pages, it's a list of all the businesses and their phone numbers in the area. And she said, no, we don't have that in Korea. And I said, well, then how am I supposed to find anything? Right? And she said, just on the road. <laughs> you can see some mechanic. The road. And I said, well, I want to call them and see who's the cheapest one. So I'm really So I'm going to call them first and ask the price. Right? So then, yes, just searching on neighbor maybe is the only option. But there's not a list. I have to search on neighbor and find and find and find. Right? Yeah. So if I'm doing marketing research in Korea, it's going to be harder than doing marketing research in Ireland or, or the US, where they have a clear list and directory of the companies. So, for example, if I do in New York, I just look in New York, interior designer. You can find online, white pages, it's called a white pages. Okay? Then all of the interior designers in New York is listed on the white pages. And then the phone number is there, an email address. So you can call them or send them an email. Okay? It's very organized. So you can have this problem in some countries. Okay? Even some countries don't have accurate maps of the country. For example, 
So how are you guys planning to get the information about Iran and Saudi Arabia? Hmm? You want to send a mail to Iran expert? Do you think they're going to give you the information for free? Marketing company? Hmm? Maybe you can change your country, right? If you want, you can keep Iran and Saudi Arabia. But as we're looking through here, right, it's going to be hard to find the data. You know, either secondary data or primary data, okay? Unless you know somebody who speaks the language and can help you, right? For example, you have a student in your group from Kazakhstan and choosing Kazakhstan is fine because they know the language, or China, they know the language, right? But uh, really you should choose an English-speaking country, apart from that, right? Uh, then, <coughs> The language barrier is the most biggest problem, right? Uh, literacy can also pose another problem. Uh, even, even when we have the language barrier, we need to translate things. So how can we check that things are translated properly? A lot of times you make an error in translation. Have you ever tried translating for people? No. Some things don't. Uh, have a, a direct translation. Do you understand Nunchi? The Korean Nunchi? It doesn't have a translation in English. Right? So there are many Korean words that there is no English word, or English words where there is no Korean word. And also the way of saying things, the sentence structure, and the way of saying things. Right? If you make a question in Korean and then translate to English, it might seem strange to the English person. Why are you asking the question like that? Okay? So we have to make the translation properly. So one, we have to use these different techniques. Back translation is just we translate to the other language and translate it back. It doesn't have the same meaning. Okay? So we get somebody to translate my English sentence to Korean. Then I get somebody else to translate back from Korean to English. Is the English sentence the same as it was at the start or completely different? If it's completely different, I know there's a problem. Okay? That's one way of checking translation. Another way is parallel translation. Get two people to translate. Okay? And check. Is it the same? Okay? <coughs> so, uh, internet research is another way of, of doing the research. Just we have to be familiar of problems with internet research. More men use the internet, 60% of men, 40% women. Young people use the internet more than old people, right? Average voting age is about 50, well, the average internet user is 32. More people who use the internet have college degrees, higher percent of college degree. They have a higher income than the other people. So it's not really, a, <coughs> internet users is not as that accurate a sample. Okay, but in Korea, maybe it's more accurate than other countries, right? Korea has one of the highest internet users in the world, okay? So, it might be, in Korea, it might be a little bit more equal. Things might be more equal. Okay? So, things we can do online, online surveys. Do you know SurveyMonkey? That kind of website. So, we can send, one thing we can do is send a link to the people, right? So we, make, we can make a survey here, right? It's in Korean. Came up in Korean. But we can design our own survey here, okay? And then we can send the link to the other people or put on Facebook. Okay, and people just fill in the questions, answer the questions. So do you understand the online surveys? Have you participated in an online survey? Before? You have? What kind of survey did you participate in? Skills what? 
curriculums? Hmm? Online, on web survey? You mean, uh, okay, that you do after you get your results? No. Different one? What kind of survey did you say yes? About the opinion of our professors in the university. Ah, uh, okay. But I mean, your, did you just, apart from the university, outside the university, do you do any surveys? Yeah. Hmm? About the... <coughs> About what? Being great and so if you want you can practice you can make a survey for all your friends on social media do you what social media do you use <laughs> Facebook Korea then you can make a survey which do you like better ice cream or chocolate ice cream chocolate right then all your friends can answer the question do you want to do that <laughs> Would your friend, what would your friends think? You put up a survey like that? No? No? Okay. We can have online focus group where the people can do the internet chat together, asking the people their opinion about something in a group, and they can have a conversation. Uh, web visitor tracking. Uh, seeing how many visitors we have to our website, measuring how many people saw our advertisement. Okay, we have email marketing, uh, like sending out emails to people. Observational research, uh, just checking what people are doing online. So in the last week, we are going to do a case study of a company which is doing the online uh, selling. So we look at this kind of thing more in that time. Okay. Then uh, we can also estimate the demand in the market. So we have two ways of doing that. First one is the experts. So the key in using expert opinions is triangulation. Triangulation is, we have three points in the triangle. So one, expert one, expert two, expert three. What do they think? This guy thinks that the shampoo will grow by 10% next year. This woman thinks the shampoo is going to grow by 5%. This woman thinks the shampoo will grow by 8%. So what's our answer? How much is the shampoo market going to grow by? In the middle, right? So let's say it's going to be around 7.7%, right? You can get, maybe that's not correct, but triangulation means we get the opinion of not just one expert, different experts, three, at least three different experts, and find what's the uh, opinions, right? So again, that's the kind of thing if you do your, in your uh, project, extra points, right? You found some expert in the area, experts are in the area of business that you're looking at, okay? And what did they say about the future demand in that area, in that product, that future trend? Okay. Analogy is assuming the demand for a product develops in the same way in all countries, just as the economic development occurs in each country. So we introduce a new product into a country. Can you tell me any new product, example of a new product that we didn't have five years ago? Selfie stick. Selfie stick. So in Korea, selfie stick grow, grows by 200% the sales in the first year. Okay? So we say, well, it grew by 200% in the first year in Korea. So we expect the same thing in Japan when we start selling it in Japan, when we start selling it in Iran, wherever, right? It's going to grow by 200% in the first year. And then the second year, it was just growing 100%. They can't keep up this growth, but it's still growing very quick. Okay? So we just look, analogy is we look at what happened in the past in another country, and then we say the same thing is going to happen. So that's how we can estimate the demand. Then we need to analyze the information. <coughs> so we have to accept 
Information is not perfect. There's limitations. So understand about that. Okay? When we're analyzing the information, it, it can help to consult with natives and have a high level of understanding of the market. So again, when you're doing your research, if you consult with the native, extra points. Okay? It shows that you thought about the thinking of the local people, or you ask them, what do you think? Right? You have your marketing plan. At least we should ask the local people, what do you think about the marketing plan? Right? Your marketing plan is for Barbie and just the blonde haired blue eyed doll, right? And you didn't think about the cultural problem. Then maybe the native person will say to you, well, mm, you're trying to sell that doll here, but I think that the people prefer the doll more like Pocahontas, right? With the dark hair and the dark eyes, okay? So uh, it helps to talk with the natives, okay? Uh, we should also have a skeptical attitude, which is similar to that there's limitations, that we don't have to trust the information 100%. Okay? So we just consider the information, but we don't trust it 100%. <clears throat> so, maybe not in our project, but in the real life, the best situation is to have local researchers in the market who coordinate closely with the client company. So companies have different ways of doing market research. We, can, we have our own market research department in our company, and they make the market research and just check with the natives. Or, we can hire another company to do the market research, okay, that's quite common. So I hire a company in the country, okay, local people in the country to do the market research in that country. And uh, we can go that way. So it depends on your company. Your company might not want to spend the money. They might say, no, you have to do the market research because we don't, we don't have any money to spend much money, right? Or they might tell you, okay, we have money. You can hire local market researcher, and they can help you to do the research. Okay? Do you want to work for a market research company? In Korea, they also have market research companies. They help the foreign companies to do market research in Korea. Does anybody want to work for that kind of company? In Korea? Doing market research? For example, the car company wants to come to Korea. They want you to do research on the automotive industry in Korea, that kind of thing. Okay. So we can have those kind of professional marketing research firms. So the people who are making the end decisions, they should be involved in the start of the research, defining the problem, and also in the field work. So it shouldn't be the case that I just do everything, all the field work, all the research, everything. And then I just make the presentation to the boss, and then the boss decides. Okay? It should be the person who's deciding should be involved. So if you're working in the company and your boss is not involved, you have to try and make them involved. Okay? They should be involved so that they can understand better. So if, when you're setting out the problem at the start, you need to ask your boss what exactly is the problem. Right? Then the boss needs to say what the problem is exactly. Okay? And help to make the problem. The boss needs to help also with some of the work, the field work, so they understand about it. Okay? And as we mentioned before, be careful of misunderstandings from uh, the language or cultural. Cultural misunderstanding can be a big one. Right? So, <clears throat> in conclusion, market research provides information for more accurate decision making. So, should we sell the product in that country or not? Okay, so we have to do the research. The challenges are understanding and respecting the respondents' culture and surveys, getting access to secondary information. Okay? Key to success, include the natives, talk to the natives, find multiple sources of secondary information and use triangulation, and try to include the decision maker in the uh, decisions. So then let's discuss the questions to review with our partner. So what is the difference between primary and secondary data?
Okay, so can anybody answer the first question? <coughs> uh, primary data is data you collected for yourself. Mm -hmm. And secondary data is the data you uh, somebody else already collected for themselves as a primary data. Okay, or economic data, that kind of thing. Okay, so then uh, let's, this was the second question with our partner. Okay, so how is the international environment complicated? Complicated issues? Can anybody answer? What's, what's the problem with sampling? Problem with sampling? Uh, it may not match the exactly for okay. okay, so the date the sent they might not have census data, proper census data. Okay. They may not have the proper data from the government agencies. Okay. Other ways that market research is complicated by the environment? Maybe the research can be manipulated. Yes, somebody could have manipulated the research for some reason. Anything else? 
and also the translation translation of the research can be a problem. Yes. Anything else? Yes, maybe people didn't respond well. Okay, that one is more relevant in this last question, right? So we have some similar problems, but more specific for the primary data. Willingness of people to respond. Any other problems with getting the primary data? The language barrier. Other problems? Mm -hmm. People's opinions. In different countries, they have different opinions about different products, about the use of the product or why the product is being used. Okay, the translations and the self reference criteria. So uh, then the next class we'll do the review and then the midterm. So on the syllabus, we can see which chapters we covered. Okay? And, and which pages are relevant. So, uh, we studied uh, up to here, uh, marketing research to chapter eight, right? So, uh, we can review the chapters. Uh, so if you want, you can ask me to loan my book, just, or you can check the book in the library. Or if you have the book, it's better. Okay, just look back at the readings. Look back at the video or the PPT file. Uh, there is a quiz. If you look at the syllabus, on the syllabus on the home page, we have the website of the book. On the book, they have some quiz for each chapter. Okay, so I'm going to take some of the questions, exam questions from here. Okay. So it means that if you do the quiz, some of the questions may not be relevant, maybe we didn't cover in the class, right? But if you go down and work through this quiz, you can see the questions and you can see the answers. You check your answers, okay? It's a good way to review, okay? The relevant chapter, choose the chapter, okay? So this one is about culture, right? So, also you can look back at the questions we asked in the class. So we will have multiple choice question and short question on the exam. Okay, so do you have any questions about the test? Just the case study we did on L'Oreal is being graded by the being graded by the case study. So it's, the case study on L'Oreal will not be on the test. Uh, PlayStation. Mm -hmm. PlayStation could be on the test because we're not grading that by case study. Everything that is studied so far. Yes, apart from the L'Oreal uh, case study. Test is next week in two hour class. So that's uh, next Wednesday, the 27th. Okay, on Friday, we'll do a review, review quiz. Any more questions? No? Okay, then let's finish there for today. Uh, this is an online book. Uh, online book here. Take a syllabus. A short book called Marketing for $7. You can buy it this thing.
Yes, the things that we dealt with in the class is more. I can't. I can't ask. I'm not going to ask you a question that's only in the book and we didn't cover in the class, right? I'm only going to ask questions about what we covered in the class, topics we covered in the class. Just my point is, just this subject is marketing, not financial management. So, statistics or financial management, or if you study theoretical physics, then reading the book is not as that useful. You need to have the teacher, right? And you need to have somebody to explain and tell you what to do. But marketing is a soft subject. Soft subject means if you read the book, you should get an A grade. Because you don't really need people to stand there and explain to you exactly what it means, right? So that's why I recommend it from the start of the course. This is marketing, so you should read the book every week. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Read the chapter. It's a soft subject, so you read the chapter, you know the information, you can answer the question on the test. Okay? Uh, so, multiple choice questions. I'll choose some from the website. And then on the other hand, it will be short questions. Short questions will be similar to kind of like questions we asked in the class. Discuss with your partner questions. Somewhat similar to those kind of questions. Uh, maybe between 30 or 40 questions. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> 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 30 questions. I downloaded this small book. Uh, this book, it helps, but the other book is better. The other book is more, the bad news is the other book is more expensive, right? It's 20, 40,000. The link is on the web page. 40,000 more. Yes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the book is useful to learn about international markets. So this book costs. You know, the ship man one in, in the US, but just Sam and one in Korea, right? Because Korea is still classified as a developing country just for textbooks. So it means Korea can get the cheap price for the academic textbook. So I think it's, it's uh, compared to the US. When I was in university, I used to uh, just a lot of the time just uh, rent a book from the library or something like that. The textbook is very expensive. Well, it was the same for me. If I read the book in the soft subject, then I would get the A grade, right? That's what my experience in the university. The other subject is a little bit different. If it's not a soft subject, then just reading the book you may not be guaranteeing to get an A grade. But the soft subjects, if you read the books, then you have a better understanding than the students who didn't read the book. So you can get a better grade in the exam. That's my idea. Yes, I agree. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I borrow the book? Yes.
Thank you. 